If anyone told you the human body is a wonder of nature, they were lying. The human body is absolutely riddled with weak points and flaws. If you've ever experienced back pain or had to spend 12 hours pushing a literal mini-human out of your body, you know this well. It is good for any aspiring evolutionary to know the problems of our anatomy if we're going to fix them. So today, that is what we will be discussing. I mentioned childbirth before and it really is extremely inconvenient for our reproduction. For placental mammals like us, our babies pass through the pelvic opening or outlet. Most animals have a wide pelvis so this isn't much of a problem, but evolution hated humans so it gave us long, narrow pelvises. This made it radically more difficult for us to give birth relative to other mammals. First-time mothers spend roughly 12 to 24 hours in childbirth. If you look at our primate cousins, the great apes, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, etc., they spend between 1 to 2 hours in childbirth. That's 12 times less than humans. Elephants often deliver much faster despite the size of their calves. Undulates like horses and cows can give birth in minutes. Unfortunately, humans aren't so lucky. To be fair, we have evolved various workarounds to this problem. For instance, human babies are born with skulls that are relatively flexible. This allows them to pass through the birth canal more easily. But it still doesn't change the fact that humans got the short end of the evolutionary stick when it comes to childbirth. You know it's bad when various mythologies came up with stories to explain why human childbirth is particularly bad. This isn't our only anatomical quirk. The human spine is basically designed to break. Most animals have a horizontal orientation. Whether it's lizards, beetles, salamanders or wolves, most animals have this orientation because it's stable. A horizontal body balanced over multiple limbs like a table. The weight of the body is evenly distributed over each limb. But humans are upright. We have a vertical orientation, so the weight of our bodies isn't evenly balanced. Instead, it's more like a giant stack of pancakes. The pancake at the top is fine, but the one below it must carry the weight of the one above it, and the third one has to carry the weight of the two above it, and so forth. The pancake at the bottom must carry the weight of all the pancakes above and will probably get squashed by all that weight. This is what happens to the vertebrae in our spines. The vertebrae at the top are fine, but the ones at the bottom must carry the weight of the entire upper body. Naturally, they eventually weaken and potentially break, causing massive lower back pain. Older people often slouch and use canes or walkers to relieve the pain. Almost as if evolution is saying we should be walking on all fours. Reject humanity. Return to monkey. Computer, run a diagnostic on our systems. I think Gorilla Grodd might have gotten into them. But the structure that handles most of our body weight is our feet. Most vertebrates have four feet so each foot only handles about a quarter of the body's weight. But we humans are bipeds. Ergo, we are two-footed. Ergo, we only have two feet. So each foot must handle half our body weight. That's twice as much as our quadrupedal cousins. Now this isn't necessarily a problem. After all, many vertebrate animals, ostriches, chickens, kangaroos, are bipedal with minimal issues. But their feet have a sleek design using very few bones and ligaments. Chickens have around 12 foot bones and ostriches only have about 8. So there are very few potential points of failure. Humans have 26 in each foot, 2 to 3 times more than in other bipeds. Humans have 206 bones in total, at least in the adults. Well, assuming you're not Bucky Barnes. That means that a quarter of the bones in your body are just in your feet. This disastrously convoluted design 
means our feet have several potential points of failure. Metatarsal fractures, navicular stress fractures, sesamoid fractures, and arch collapse are just some of the ways our feet can fail. An estimated 75% of adults experience foot pain at some point in their lives. And with 26 bones, 33 joints, and over 100 muscles, tendons, and ligaments, it's no surprise. There is a lot that can go wrong here. By now, you might have astutely noted that these problems can all be traced back to one issue. Humans are upright. Africa used to be a vast continent of forests. Our tree-dwelling ancestors thrived in this environment. Our feet, like our hands, had lots of bones and joints to be flexible enough to grab tree branches. Our hips were short and wide for better stability and childbirth, and our horizontal spines worked well for our horizontal bodies. But around 7 million years ago, during the Miocene, the continent started to dry up. The vast forests gradually gave way to savannas and grasslands. Our ancestors had to switch from an arboreal lifestyle to more of a roaming, scavenging one, traveling long distances between patches of trees for food. Why is this relevant? If you are a sprinter, four legs are best. Using all fours gives you greater acceleration. The problem is that four legs take up a lot of energy, so they tend to get tired quickly during these sprints. But it turns out, if you want to roam long distances, two legs are better. I feel like there is an Animal Farm reference in there somewhere. Walking or running on two legs is slower but you can walk long distances without getting tired. This is what we did. We took our bodies meant for trees and adapted them to walking on open plains. To facilitate walking upright, our spines became vertical. Our hips went from being short and wide to long and narrow, and our bony, flexible feet became long and rigid. And so began the problems associated with human anatomy. There are other, more minor problems. The femoral triangle, for example, is the region located within the supermedial aspect of the anterior thigh. Basically, it's this area. The femoral triangle has several large arteries, veins, and nerves all passing close to the skin. No bony protection, no thick layers, nothing. So if you get injured here, your leg could get partially paralyzed. Your blood vessels would break and you'd bleed out. In other animals, this area is more hidden behind the thigh because of their posture. But when humans became upright, it became more exposed. Speaking of exposed, the same problem arises for our abdomen. Our abdomen houses many important and sensitive organs. The liver, spleen, stomach, intestines, kidneys, and major blood vessels all lie within this region. Hits to the abdomen can cause life-threatening internal bleeding because major vessels are close to the surface. The abdomen, for most animals, faces the ground, so it's partially protected. You would have to get under the animal to access it, which, unless the animal is exceptionally large, is hard. But once again, humans became upright. This exposes our abdomens, making them vulnerable. If you've ever seen a liver kick, you know how vulnerable this region can be. In the making of this video, I realized there is yet another issue with human anatomy. Not long ago, I caught a cold. This led me down a rabbit hole to figure out why humans get respiratory infections so frequently. The average human adult gets two to four colds per year. Children get six to eight per year. Most mammals rarely get them. When they do, it's usually under stress, captivity, or exposure to human pathogens. Have you ever noticed that humans are one of the few mammals with extremely flat faces? Some animals, like koalas and pandas, get close, but humans took it to the extreme. Every other mammal has a protruding muzzle, 
or snout. This gives multiple advantages. Longer nasal passages are better at warming and humidifying the air you breathe. This can filter dust, pollen, and pathogens more effectively. A bigger snout also means more room for olfactory sensors, which improves the sense of smell. There's more room for teeth, and I could go on and on and on about the advantages. But the advantage I want to focus on is drainage. A long snout gives the sinuses a lot of room, allowing them to drain downwards. This is the ideal. Our ancestors probably had protruding muzzles too, but we gradually evolved flatter faces for various reasons. As our muzzles shrank, our sinuses became squashed in. This left us with sinuses that don't always drain well, making them perfect breeding grounds for pathogens. Fluids often pool in some of our sinuses, so when respiratory pathogens enter them, they can grow and multiply there without being washed away. This has made us more susceptible to certain respiratory diseases. Our scrunched up sinuses also make us more susceptible to some breathing problems, like sleep apnea. There is also less room for our teeth, so we develop wisdom teeth problems, and so on and so forth. From the outside, human faces seem fine, but within, they are the anatomical equivalent of a car wreck. Everything has been squashed in, causing multiple problems. Perhaps this is why humans created pugs, so they could share in our plight, and we wouldn't be alone. Apologies if my diatribe on the abomination that is the human body was depressing. It's simply something I've been stewing on and thought others might be interested in. Can you think of other ways evolution crippled us? Do you have personal experience with one or more of these problems? Let us know in the comments below. And for more discussions on biology and evolution, subscribe to the Evolutionary Institute.